Hey guys, this is Cross for Double Cross Games, and today I want to show you guys how to make a modular track and cart system. It works sort of like my little cubes here. You can just drag a spline anywhere you want, and your carts, in this case these cubes, will go along the spline at whatever speed you want them to. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill my versions that I have here for the demo. And then we're going to right click blueprint class and the first thing we're going to make is the track so we're going to call it track and double click to open it and the only thing we have to do to this guy is we're going to add a component and it's going to be a spline component right here later on you can uh, change this spline component for uh, a spline mesh or you can add a procedural mesh to this to make it into an actual track or an actual road or whatever it is you're trying to build for for now this is all you're gonna need we'll call it useful spline so we can remember what it's called later compile and save and then we close out of that and we're gonna right click again on our content folder and create a new blueprint class actor and this is gonna be our cart and double click that brings it up like this. First thing, we're going to add a static mesh. There we go, static mesh. And this is going to be our cart mesh. And for this, we're going to just use the cube like we had before. And we're going to bring it up a little so it's above the spline instead of inside of it. Compile. We'll go to the event graph. Get rid of this stuff that we're not going to use. Alright, first thing, we're going to create a boolean called active cart. This is going to allow us to turn the cart on and off. So we can have carts that don't start turned on and so on. And we're going to hold B, left click for a branch, drop that in, and hook that up to it. And we're going to right click anywhere and type custom event. And this custom event is going to be our move cart. This is how we're going to move the cart. So then we're going to drag out of the true side of this and call our move cart that we just created. So if this is true, which right now it isn't, the cart's going to start automatically on event begin play. All right, next thing we're going to need is a timeline. So we're going to right click, add timeline. And this is a really powerful tool. I, rec I strongly recommend if you've never used a timeline before, you kind of play around with it. Uh, it allows you to run things forward and backwards, has all of the play rate stuff that you need uh, that you would expect of any other kind of play device. But it also allows you to put different types of curves in it. And I'll show you here in a second. And we'll call this our cart mover. And double click. And like I said, it lets you put floats, vectors, events, and colors in there. It even lets you import your own curves, but that's a little bit outside of the scope of this. So we're, for now, we're just going to use a float curve. We'll call it alpha. And all we need is to right click, and we're going to add a keyframe at 0, 0 zero time, zero value. Then right click again, add keyframe. That's going to be at one and one. One second, value of one. So you should have a line that looks like this. It's a one second timeline. And we we're going to check this box here that says use last keyframe so that it actually uses this keyframe. And we're going to hit loop. Compile, and save, back to our event graph. Now if you look, we have an alpha coming out of here, a float return, which we're going to drag out, and we're going to promote to variable. And yep, we're going to call it alpha, because that's exactly what it is. Alright, the next thing we need to do is we need to set the location of our cart. So we're going to do set actor location and rotation. And by default, the target itself, which is exactly what we want. 
and, but we don't have a location or a rotation. So to get that, we need a reference to our track. So we're going to add a variable. We'll call it track reference. We're going to expose it. And we're going to hit this drop down here for the variable type. And we're going to type track. Now that track actor that we created can be used as a variable as an object reference. So now that we have that, we can compile to make sure the variable is actually updated. Drag it in, get, and since this is a reference to our track, we can get useful spline, which means that now we have access to the information about our spline that we that is going to define our track. So we can drag out of here. We want to get spline length. So no matter how wibbly and wobbly your track gets, this will give us the total length of the spline. So then we right click, type lerp. And so for those of you who are not familiar with lerps, what that does is it allows you to put in what's called an alpha, which is a number from 0 to 1. And when alpha is 0, it will give you 100% of A value as a return. And when alpha is 1, it'll give you 100% of value B as a return. And if you have, a, for example, a timeline that moves the alpha from 0 to 1, you get a very nice gradual mixture between A and B. In this case, it will be the length of our spline going from the beginning of the spline to the end of the spline. What we don't have is a location. So to get a location associated with that distance, we control C, control V, so we can get a reference to our spline. And we're going to do get location at distance along the spline. And that gives us a vector. We can take this return value and plug it straight into the distance. We put this to world so that we get an absolute value. And then we do the exact same thing for the rotation. Control C, control V, drag out of that, do get rotation at distance along the spline, plug in the same distance, switch it to world so that it's nice and uniform, and plug the rotation straight into the set actor location or rotation. Now, so theoretically this should get the card moving from 0 to 1 along at the rate of 1 second every single time. But how do we adjust the speed of the cart? To do that we need a Another variable we're going to call duration. This is going to control, it's going to be a float. This is going to control how fast the cart moves along the spline. But to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to get our spline, which is now under component. If your variables look like this, you just click the little arrow, shows you your mesh, your, your scene root, and also your, sp I'm sorry, your timeline, not the spline, the timeline. Drop your timeline in, you drag out of it, and you can set play rate. Now, we know that our, that our uh, timeline is one second long. So, if we drag out of this, and we hit divide, float by float, and we set one at the top, and we set our duration at the bottom, we can input a duration in seconds and it's going to stretch out the play rate in such a way that it's going to make it take duration. However much time you put in duration is how long it's going to take the timeline to go from 0 to 1. So if we set this to 1, hey, guess what? Play rate is 1, so it takes 1 second to give from 0 to 1. If you set this to any other number, it takes longer. So it allows you to put in a value in seconds that yields a slower cart. So then, next thing we want to do is we want to give ourselves the ability to have carts that don't start necessarily at zero. So we're going to go ahead and grab our timeline one more time and drag out of it and we're going to do set new time. 
Now this does exactly the same thing as this pin right here. But we want our our timeline to play and we can't plug both pins in. So we plug it into play and we do it right here. We're going to promote this to a variable and we'll call this cart start offset. Now since we know that our timeline goes from and we're going to expose that as well so that we can change it on the fly outside. So we know that our timeline goes from 0 to 1, so this number has to be between 0 and 1. And so we can gate, uh, not really gate, we can clamp the values here so that we can't mess it up when we're out in the world. And this should work as is. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So, we'll go ahead and drag this out kind of crazy, probably not through the wall or the floor. Ugh, that's what happens when you're bad at this. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and I'll drag to add another point, and we'll just make it all wibbly wobbly so that you can really see the the curving of the of the pieces. All right, so that's pretty weird. All right, so we'll drive one of our carts in. Now, we, we added this reference right here in the details panel, so we can click on this uh, eyedropper. And notice how it doesn't let me select anything other than the spline. And not just any spline. It has to be the track actor. And we want the duration, we'll, I don't know, we'll set it to five seconds, make sure that active cart is turned on. And let's see what it does. And look at that. It follows the spline just like you would expect. Gets to the end and snaps to the front. But we said that we could put more than, we can add more than one cart to this. Same deal. Active cart. Select the track. Duration can be, we'll set it to 5. And then we'll set this offset to 0 0.5. And what we should see is this block will snap to the middle of the spline wherever that is and then continue the track. So let's see. And there we have it. We have perfectly offsetted cards that follow the track. And that's it, guys. I uh, hope you liked it. If you have any questions or concerns, comments, just put them down in the comment section. And uh, we'll make sure to answer any questions you guys have. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.